Inshallah, everybody's in good health and high iman. All right, inshallah. So um, let us start uh, the series of our usual talk that's going on in regards to al Deen al al Islam. I mean, asl Deen al Islam, meaning asl Deen. Uh, last week, alhamdulillah, we covered the topic of Taghut. It went pretty long, subhanallah, but it was very important to cover it. I pray Taala that everybody was able to understand it and um, uh, I did not receive any questions so inshallah I hope it was clear because the topic of Taghut is something that is you know uh, like, like I've explained before you know it's confusing to many because it's not a common knowledge uh, because of the society that we're living in people try to not try to they tend to in fact hide this part of the deen, this part of the knowledge, this part of ilm, because again, subhanAllah, you know, mostly people are either they're scared, you know, or at the same time, you know, they just want to just basically, you know, leave that part, which is taqfirullah completely wrong, because it is because it is very important for our aqidah. And that's one of the reasons why I went into the details of explaining what taghut is, what is the system of Taghut and how we're not supposed to follow a Taghut system or the Tawarid of today, their laws, their man-made laws, their their justice system, whatever system they have, you know, their democracy and so on and so forth. And again, that is to do with our Shahada, that is to do with our La ilaha illallah, that is to do with the condition of our Tawheed, subhanAllah. So if somebody who does not you know, understand Tawud, uh, you know, because again, subhanAllah, it goes back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly mentioned it, like, you know, you have to believe in Allah and disbelief in anything else, which is either worshipped, obeyed or followed, besides or uh, instead of Allah, okay, so, and that includes any everything and anything which is in the law of Allah that has Allah has made, so, you know, again, uh, I don't think we have to go into details of that. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, everything was clear. Uh, sisters, be very open, be very frank. If there is something that is not clear, if there is something, you know, that uh, I'm doing a mistake in, or if, if you cannot understand me properly, then please, inshallah, you know, clarify yourself. Do not hesitate to ask anything. And, you know, just you have to be very confirmed in regard to the matter of aqidah. I always, I always say this and repeat it. Because inshallah, you know, once we are strengthened in this, then, you know, for shaitan, for shaitan to divert us from this would be impossible for him, bi ta'ala. Why? Because we will be so confirmed, we'll be so firm upon our path of, on, on our path of the deen. So that's why inshallah, you know, if you have any doubts, always feel free to ask anything inshallah. Alright, so moving on. After we finish the taghut, uh, we're going to go into now, uh, today we're going to go into the conditions of our shahada of Tawheed. Yes, Tawheed, which is La ilaha illallah, that part of our Tawheed, that part of our shahada, the first part of our shahada, which is La ilaha illallah, it has conditions. And there are many, subhanAllah, many, 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 um, I would say, you know, jahil people basically who do not accept such thing as there are any conditions of shahada or there are any conditions to Tawheed. They basically say, as long as, you know, you say, La ilaha illallah, you're a Muslim. As long as you say, La ilaha illallah, and you do not pray, you're a Muslim. As long as you say, La ilaha illallah, even if you do shirk, even if you don't, uh, you know, even if you don't, you know, basically have anything to do, you have nothing of Islam in you, 
you're still a Muslim and you die as a Muslim, you will be gone. You'll, you'll eventually go to Jannah. You know, basically, you're just a Muslim. There is no such thing as you not becoming and not being a Muslim if you have said la ilaha illallah. Subhanallah, you know, this is the mentality of majority of the so-called Muslims. Why I'm saying so-called? Because majority of them are not even considered Muslims. If we look deep into their aqidah, if we understand how they are following the deen, subhanallah. So that is the reason why there's, there are so many innovation in the deen. There are so many bid'at in the deen because people do not understand there are conditions to every matter of the deen, not just tawheed. Everything we do in our daily lives, our prayers have conditions, our our wudu have conditions, our you know uh, waking up, sleeping, everything we have conditions. Our own ibadat we have the in, we have the conditions, meaning the intention and so on and so forth. Everything has conditions that Allah has laid down upon us. So in truth. What these people want is they want to say that do not tell us anything about the conditions because that will stop us from following our desires. That will stop us from following the footsteps of the kuffar. So don't tell us the conditions. And that's why most of the ulama, I would say, you know, uh, ulama in the sense that they are so-called ulama, they're not the real authentic ulama who like to hide the deen, who like to follow the footsteps of um, the mushrikeen or the kuffar, you can consider them as scholars of dollars or palace scholars and so on and so forth. They like to hide the conditions of Tawheed. They like to hide the conditions of, uh, or the, the not just the conditions, the explanation of Tawhud and so on and so forth. So the ulama clearly say those who are upon the Haq, those from our Salaf, those from our uh, Sahaba, basically all those whom we know are our authentic ulama of the past, and even the present, there are many authentic ones, alhamdulillah. They say just like how the salah, the zakat, the psalm, the hajj, the jihad, the commanding evil, forbidding, uh, the commanding of good and forbidding evil, which is Amar bin Ma'aruf and Nihal Munkar, all of these have conditions. Those are extracted from the Quran and the Sunnah. The same way. The shahada which is extracted from the Quran and the Sunnah, which is La ilaha illallah, as well has conditions, meaning shurud. So what are the shurud or the conditions of Tawheed? Uh, and how are they known amongst the Salaf al-Salih? How do we know this? What, where is our dalil basically? Where is our evidence coming from? Why is it that, you know, people just take one hadith, which we all know, a very, very common hadith, which is what? That the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet wasallam said, when if somebody says La ilaha illallah, he will enter Jannah. If, if whoever's last word is La ilaha illallah, he will enter Jannah. Right? We know that hadith. Everybody knows that hadith. Based on that hadith, everybody quotes that you know, no matter what you do in your life, you will remain as a Muslim as long as you say La ilaha illallah. Even if you don't pray, even if you do shirk, you are still a Muslim. That's it. Full stop. Subhanallah. So there is no such thing as Nawaqid or Islam. There is no such thing that will uh, make you become an apostate, that will nullify your Islam. No, no such thing. You're still a Muslim. You will remain a Muslim. Subhanallah. For them, there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Wahab ibn Mun, uh, Munabih. Uh, Wahab ibn Munabih, who was a tabi'in, he was asked a question. Isn't La ilaha illallah the key to Jannah? He said, La ilaha illallah is indeed the key to Jannah. But, listen to this sisters, but it has teeth. Teeth meaning ridges. It has teeth, meaning the key we know has teeth. So, Wahab ibn, uh, Wahab ibn Munabih, he said, indeed, La ilaha illallah is the key to Jannah, but it has teeth, meaning it has ridges. And if a person who does not come with the teeth of La ilaha illallah, they will not be able, they will not be able to open the door of Jannah. Subhanallah sisters. How many of us have not come across this hadith? Like literally. I, I mean when uh, I'm, I'm speaking from my own self here. I'm not saying, subhanallah, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm saying this about my own self. When I was jahil, I was not aware of this hadith. 
Subhanallah, even when I started practicing, obviously in the beginning when I wasn't studying Aqidah, I wasn't aware of this hadith. Because everything that I talk, I talk from experience. I talk from what I went through because we all have gone through certain stages of jahil, certain stages of ignorance. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah, Allah blessed us with the deen, with a hidayah. But subhanAllah, we all have gone through certain stages when we were ignorant. And that's the reason why whenever we try to explain something to somebody who's, uh, who is an ignorant, ignorant like who, how we were, that we try to explain to them how we learned. Similarly, subhanAllah, when I was jahil, like I said, everybody knew and uh, like me, when I was jahil, everybody knew that whoever has said La ilaha illallah, he's a Muslim. You cannot say anything else about him, even if he does not pray, even if he does shirk, or even if he does this and that. He is still a Muslim. He could be sinful. He could go to hellfire and, you know, basically um, uh, go through the torment of his sins, of the punishment. You know, even he might get punishment in the grave. But eventually, he will still enter Jannah. Even if he does shirk, even if he does, uh, even if he does not pray the, even if he did not pray a single salah in his life, na'uzu billah. You know, this this is what we were taught since the beginning. I would say, you know, by our parents or by their parents or by our forefathers and so on and so forth. Meaning all those people who were ignorant, who did not study the deen. And that's one of the reasons why when Allah blesses us with hidayah, with the deen, we should study the very first important matter, which is aqidah. Understanding all important matters in our deen that is related to aqidah. So this hadith, which I just quoted in Sahih Bukhari, from Sahih Bukhari, even the mushrikun, the mushrikun of Quraysh, the mushrikin, they understood that the, sahab, that the shahada itself had conditions. How did they understand? I explained this earlier. They understood that if they said la ilaha illallah, what would they have to do? They would have to give up their idol worshipping. Meaning they had to give up the way of their forefathers, the life of their forefathers. They understood clearly that la ilaha illallah means that their love, meaning their, their entire, their, their, their uh, unconditional love, their ibadah, their following, their magnification, their obedience would and should only be for Allah alone. They understood this very clearly. And I mentioned this earlier in one of the previous parts because of the surah in Surah at Safat, uh, the ayah 35 to 37, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Truly, when it was said to them, la, say, meaning said to them to say, La ilaha illallah, they puffed themselves up with pride. Meaning they denied it. And then they said, are we going to abandon our, uh, our gods for the sake of a mad point? Meaning they understood this. That if they say la ilaha illallah, they will have to give up their everything towards their other gods. And then what did Allah say? They said, nay, he, meaning Muhammad, has come with the truth, meaning Allah's religion. And he confirms the messengers before, meaning before him, who brought Allah's religion. And then in Surah Sa'd, Ayah 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Has he made the gods all into one God? Really, this is a curious thing, meaning it's, it's something that is a lie. SubhanAllah. Yet nowadays, sisters, Imagine the many, many so-called Muslims, they don't even understand the reality of Tawheed. And they actually, the, the reality of Tawheed, which they actually call to people, is opposite of it. They say, La ilaha illallah, but they support the Tawhid. Very simple example. This itself is telling you that you have nullified your Shahada. If you're saying you're a Muslim, you can never support the Tawhid. You can never say, for example, um, what example should I take? Okay, let's take America, for example. Okay, Trump, very famous person. Everybody knows about him. If you are a Muslim, you say, La ilaha illallah, you will never, when they were, when there are voting going on, when there are elections going on, there is no way you can support the Tawhud either with your words or with your words. If you do any of this, you have left the fold of Islam because this is clear cut kufr. You're going against the Shahada, you're going against. Allah's hukam, Allah's law. You're legislating a person to become your leader who's going to remove the deen, who's going to remove the sharia, 
remove the law and implement his law upon you and you are going to be satisfied with it. So that yourself is you accepting the Tawud and rejecting the Tawheed. Just exactly the same what the Mushrikeen did. They were happy. They were, they were, in, uh, they were doing their, uh, they, they were following, they were worshiping, they were obeying their own so-called gods. So they understood that there is Tawheed, but they were not accepting because they knew they had to leave their Tawud, their idol worshiping. For them it was that. For us nowadays, the very open Tawud is what? The, 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 the so-called system, democracy, the so-called system of man-made law. We, na'uzu billah, we see so many Muslims, na'uzu billah. I think it was the uh, last time, it was this, um, every sister is probably aware of this incident that happened in India, uh, where, you know, the, the divorce law was passed and everybody's aware of it. And, uh, na'uzu billah, astaghfirullah, I saw videos and pictures of the Muslim, the so-called, I, I would say so-called Muslimas, you know, uh, hijabis, I would say, and they were, they were literally putting, you know, those flower, uh, buck, what do you call those flowers, necklaces, or whatever they are, on Moody, Moody, whatever his name is, man, na'uz billah. They were hugging him, they were praising him. Astaghfirullah, he's a ta'ud, he's a mushrik war over, he's an enemy of Allah. Have you not seen what he does to the Muslims? Forget that. He is just like the mushrikeen of Quraysh. Did the Prophet ﷺ go and hug him? Did the Prophet ﷺ ever go and, you know, put flowers over him? Did the Prophet ﷺ ever go and do anything as such what those so mus- so-called Muslims were doing? That is a reality. They praise the Ta'ud. They ally with the Ta'ud. They love the Ta'ud. Just because why? Because he passed a law which is in accordance to their desires. Na'udhu Billah. You completely rejected the Tawheed of Allah just because for the sake of this dunya. Because you wanted your life happy with your soul, with your husband and that's all you wanted. You did not care for your akhirah. You did not care what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You did not care that. Yes, fine. We can say they were jahil. But again, subhanallah, did they even, the first thing that ever, did they even, did they, they did even come to their mind that maybe we should ask an alim. Maybe we should consult someone. Is this something right? Should we even try to ask somebody else? But they didn't do that. Subhanallah. So indeed, La ilaha illallah has conditions, no doubt. It was the understanding of all the Salaf al-Salih from the past. And it has, and there is no difference. Uh, there is, yes, there is a difference in regard to the, uh, to the num, to the, what do you call that? To how many conditions there are. Some say there are five, some say there are seven conditions, some say there are ten conditions. But this is not a big deal. Why? Because this is an ishtihad issue. An ishtihad issue is open for the ulama to basically choose from. So it's not a problem as long as what they what they doing. Like some ulama has given have given five conditions, some have given seven, some have given ten. What what the less ones who have given, for example, five or seven conditions, what they have done is they have combined two or three conditions together. You know, like shorten them. Like for like like the example I gave of Tawheed uh, Hakimiyah in the past one of the classes, how that is combined under Tawheed al Uhuliya. So you know this is a similar here. This is a similarity here. What they have done is they have combined one or two or three conditions in one, and so instead of ten conditions, they say five conditions, and some instead of uh, instead of ten, they say seven, and so on and so forth. So this is not an issue, you know, if somebody says there are five conditions, you know, you don't have to argue with that person. As long as, alhamdulillah, he mentions that all the conditions, either in one or two of them together, it's fine. So as far as what we're going to be mentioning or what we're going to be studying about, uh, we will condition, inshallah, we will study, inshallah, around nine conditions. <clears throat> the reason why I'm saying we'll study, inshallah, nine conditions is because uh, specifically, those which are very, very important for us, we need to separate them. And honestly, you know, uh, from most of the ulama that I have studied under, alhamdulillah, my shayyukh, my ustad, uh, mainly have given at least eight to nine conditions. So that's one of the reasons, inshallah, that I'll go through the nine condition, uh, because those nine conditions are very, very important. Uh, once we go through them, you'll understand. So let's start with the first condition. I think I'll go through the half conditions today. And half conditions, inshallah, we will continue next week. So 
the first condition is testify within testify with your tongue this is the first shirt the first condition nutq wal al iqrar meaning the testifying with one's tongue when a person intends to enter islam it is fard wajib upon him to say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah with his tongue any person who is physically capable of speaking but refuses to say la ilaha illallah with his tongue obviously muhammad rasulullah both with tawhid and risala with his tongue he will never ever be judged as a muslim even even if he claims there is iman in his heart okay very clear sisters if somebody does not say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah with his tongue testifying with his tongue then he is not a muslim if he is capable we're not talking about those who are not capable i'll come to that inshallah but first of all uh, let us give us the dalil on this it is a it is a hadith in sahih bukhari uh, narrated by saeed ibn musayyib from his father who said when the time of death of abu talib approached prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to him and found abu jahal ibn hashim and abdullah ibn abi umayyah by his side the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to abu talib o oh, uncle say none has a right to be worshiped except allah a sentence with which i shall be a witness meaning intercede for you before allah abu jahal and abdullah ibn umayyah said o oh, abu talib are you going to denounce the religion of your father abdul muttalib the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept on inviting abu talib to say la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah while they abu jahal and abdullah kept on repeating their statement over and over again till abu talib said his last statement that he is upon the religion of his father abu muttalib and thus he refused to say la ilaha illallah and this is in sahih bukhari what do we know about this sisters very clear subhanallah we know how abu talib was so so um how do you call this helpful to the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he loved him so much he took care of him when subhanallah everybody else was wanted to kill the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was there to support him he was there to uh to even you know spread his deen in helping him in doing that but all of these good deeds subhanallah all of these good deeds would you believe if somebody did so much and not for not to any other person i mean we're not even talking about me and you here we're talking over about our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was the beloved messenger of allah so abu talib was helping the messenger of allah doing all of these good deeds I mean if somebody is doing some good deeds for us we're nothing subhanallah you know fine how can we say that you know allah will um, you know enter him jannah because of us we're nothing but this is the messenger if allah had accepted anybody without to say the shahada in jannah it would have been abu talib but what happened subhanallah he did not say it from his tongue he did not say it from his tongue subhanallah Uh, even in one of the other narration it is said that abu talib said i know i know you are on the truth i know but i cannot leave the religion of my forefathers this was another real narration meaning from his tongue he refused even though in his heart he had the iman subhanallah and we also know that had another hadith i think it's in bukhari or muslim for allah alam i don't know the exact reference because I, i i i i didn't write it down subhanallah but we know that hadith it's a very famous hadith that uh the prophet sallallahu said that on the day of judgment the one with the least punishment would be uh, abu muttalib uh, sorry abu talib and that is because obviously he supported the prophet sallallahu and what would be his punishment that the uh, that the shoes of fire hellfire shoes he'll be putting he'll he'll be wearing shoes of fire and the heat would burn his 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 brain off subhanallah his head that's how much heat it would be meaning what meaning he's from those who will stay in hellfire he was from those who will you know who wasn't a muslim the least punishment would be of uh, his uncle abu talib subhanallah so it is very clear sister that we have to utter it from our mouth from our tongue 
Imam uh, Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Tahmiyyah in his Majmu'ah Fatawah, volume 7, page 609, he said, If one has a capability to, but does not say the two testifications of Iman, meaning La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, he is a disbeliever by the agreement of all Muslims. And he is kafir inwardly and outwardly according to the Salaf of the Ummah. Their leaders and the Jumhur, meaning the vast majority of the scholars. Meaning what? Everybody has agreed that if somebody does not testify to La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, when he has the capability, what does testify mean? Meaning by his tongue, then he can never be considered as a Muslim. So, there is no difference of opinion, sisters, from the Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah in this matter, except for one sect, and that sect is the Jahamiya sect, and uh, some other similar sects who are misguided. Here we're talking about the Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, alhamdulillah, those who are upon the Aqidah wal Manhaj of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his Sahaba. So, another hadith in Bukhari and Muslim is the same hadith which we quoted earlier. Uh, in one of the in uh, in one of the previous classes, that the Prophet ﷺ said, "I have been ordered to fight the people until they testify." What does testify means? That they say it by their tongue, that there is no God except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and they establish prayer and they pay the zakah. If they do that, their blood, their wealth will be protected from me, except by the rights of Islam. The reckoning will be with Allah. This is in Bukhari and Muslim. In regards to this, Imam Nabawi said in his Shahar Muslim, volume 1, page 202, that from this we understand that one of the conditions of Iman, meaning of Muslim, of being a Muslim, is to pronounce the two testimonies of faith, meaning La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, in addition to believing in them, and believing in all the prophets, in all that the Prophet ﷺ came with. Okay, so it's very clear that the first obligation, the first condition, the very first shirt of La ilaha illallah is that one should be able to say it by his tongue. Now, I mentioned earlier, if he's capable. Now, some sometimes, obviously we know there are people who are not capable, those who are mute, they're physically unable to do so. For such, for such people, they can either write it down or obviously we know they can use the mute people. They have their own sign languages. So for them, they can either write it down or they can use certain sign languages. That would be, inshallah, acceptable from them. The second condition, the second shirt. So the first, inshallah, condition is clear that you should testify it with your tongue. The second condition is al-ilm, knowledge. And here I would quote the ayah in Surah Zukhruf, ayah 86. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Accept those who bear witness to the truth and they know. What did they know? They know that the facts about the oneness of Allah. So what is the second condition of, of, of La ilaha illallah, of shahada? Is that the person or a Muslim must have knowledge on what he is testifying by his tongue. Meaning he should know what negates and what affirms the shahada. We spoke about this earlier. He should know what is kufar bi ta'ud and what is imanu billah. He should affirm and negate. Affirm the shahada and negate anything that goes against it. Which is what? Following, obeying, worshipping the ta'ud. So anything and everything which is worshipped Besides, instead of Allah, is a false god, is a false god, and it should be rejected. So this is the second condition. It is the basic understanding that we must have in our heart. Not necessarily you have to tell this, you know, uh, like for example, if you're taking the shahada, if it's a new revert sister, she says La ilaha illallah. Uh, she says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. She doesn't specifically have to say and I, you know, uh, and I, you know, I, I disbelieve in the ta'ud. And, you know, I believe in Allah. No, this is something that she should have a firm conviction in her heart because this is part of her ilm, her knowledge. She should have this. She should know that when she's saying La ilaha illallah, what does it mean? What does it, what knowledge does it contain? It contains that 
She should have kufr bit taghut and imanu billah. Allah SWT says in Surah Muhammad, Ayah 19, So say, or, or so know, O Muhammad, the la ilaha illallah, meaning, so know, O Muhammad, the la ilaha illallah, and ask forgiveness for your sin, and also for the sin of the believing men and believing women. And Allah knows well you're moving about, and your place of rest, meaning in your homes. So what did, what did Allah SWT say here? So know that la ilaha illallah, Know, meaning have knowledge, have ilm, have yaqeen. Inshallah, that yaqeen is another condition. But you should know this. And then again, the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Bukhari, whoever dies knowing, very important sisters, knowing that there is no God except, uh, no God worthy of worship except Allah will enter paradise. This is the hadith which we commonly know. But how many of us understand the meaning of the part where it says whoever dies knowing. If somebody dies and says la ilaha illallah. But he does not have the conviction in his heart. He does not have the yaqeen in his heart. He does not believe in it. He does not accept in it. He does not, you know, he does not testify it. Then such a person is not going to enter Jannah. Because his, his shahada is incomplete. It never was there in the first place. So he needs to know whoever dies knowing La ilaha illallah, he will then enter paradise. The third condition, Al Yaqeen. What is Al Yaqeen? Certainty. We must have complete conviction in our heart. Just like I said just now when I was explaining the hadith, that unless he has complete conviction in his heart, full Yaqeen on the truthfulness of La ilaha illallah, and he negates the shirk, and that the kalima is true and everything that opposes the kalima is falsehood, is batil, then such a person is a Muslim. If he does not negate this fact, if he believes that it's okay to do shirk, if he believes that something who stands against Allah, meaning if he believes that a taghud who is standing against Allah, who is either making laws uh, against the sharia of Allah, it's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. It's all right. We can still live with the democracy. We can accept it. There's no such. It's all right. This is the modern day. We are modernist. We are modern Muslims. So on and so forth. Such a people, such a person has no yaqeen, no certainty in la ilaha illallah. Rather, he has opposed la ilaha illallah. And so his shahada was never accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hujrat, ayah 15, only those are the believers who have believed in Allah and His Messenger and afterward doubt not but strive with their wealth and their lives for the cause of Allah. Those are the truthful. Meaning those who believed with certainty. Doubt not. What does it mean? What does, what does it mean that they did not doubt? Meaning they had certainty. They would never doubt that La ilaha illallah, that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who is to be worshipped, who is to be followed, who is, to, who is to be obeyed, and none else in any other matter, then that is one who is a Muslim. The ulama say, if one testifies with his tongue, meaning he says, La ilaha illallah, but has doubt in his heart, then he is a munafiq, and his shahada will not benefit him. Meaning what? We know that, uh, we know from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that, you know, what, what's the, what, where's the level of the munafiq? He will be on the lowest depth of hellfire. We know that. Alhamdulillah. So there is no such doubt that, you know, the, 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 the munafiq will be in the lowest depth of hellfire. So for that, what is, what his shahada will not benefit him. Meaning it's not something that will make him come out of hellfire. So also in the hadith in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah. No one will meet Allah with these two words, meaning the testimonies, while he has no doubt about them, meaning what he has certainty, no doubt whatsoever, except that he will enter paradise. In another hadith in Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever you meet on the other side of this wall, meaning beyond this room, who testifies that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah, while his heart is certain of this testimony, 
very important. The Prophet very clearly said, while his heart is certain of this testimony, gave him the good news of Jannah. Another hadith in, in Muslim, the Prophet said, none will come to Allah with these words, meaning la ilaha illallah, never doubting any of it, and not see paradise. Meaning he will inshallah see paradise until and unless he is someone who has certainty. So all the above our hadith, alhamdulillah, which was quoted, are all to say that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah must be said with conviction in your heart, with certainty, with no doubt, only then will you enter Jannah. And the opposite of it is that if you have any doubt, that you do not, you know, some, if any kinds of doubt comes in and, you know, you do not, you say la ilaha illallah, but in your heart you do not accept it with certainty, that means you're someone whose shahada is not accepted. All right, inshallah. And, um, okay, let's, let's do this one. This is the last one and I'll keep the rest, inshallah, for next week. The fourth condition, al-qubul, which is acceptance. We must accept that this kalima, meaning la ilaha illallah, it indicates the Tawheed of Allah and it rejects the Tawarid, the Tawud in all form of shirk. We must accept this. Like I mentioned earlier, the Mushrikeen, they understood this shirk. They understood this condition, but they rejected it out of pride. It was the same, the same surah, the same ayah, sorry, which was uh, mentioned earlier, Surah so Safat, ayah 36, that when it was said to them to say, La ilaha illallah, they puffed themselves with pride. It was their pride that rejected because they did not want to abandon their worshipping. They believed in Allah, but they did not accept the conditions that came with the Tawheed. So they knew La ilaha illallah, but they did not accept the conditions. So unless and until they accepted all the conditions of La ilaha illallah, meaning making sure that they would not have anything to do with the Tawheed, with the Tawud, they were never Muslims. They denied to become Muslims. So it is Al-Qabul, acceptance. The last one, inshallah, let's do the fifth one as well. It's a little one. Al-Inqiyad. What is Al-Inqiyad? Submission. We must submit to the Shahada. And what it indicates, both inwardly and outwardly. What does inwardly mean? Inwardly means that we accept La ilaha illallah in our heart. Before it goes back to the same condition that what? With certainty we believe, okay, and we submit to it. And in our actions, what does it mean? That we stay away from that which prohibits the opposite, meaning anything that is opposite of Tawheed, anything that is opposite of La ilaha illallah, being free from all kind of shirk, being free from following the Tawud, being free from following anything that is opposite the Quran and the Sunnah. We know, subhanAllah, that there are certain uh, innovations, certain bid'at that actually reach the level of shirk. So we should even stay away from all kinds of bid'at because we never know, na'uzu billah, that sometimes which we might think is, you know, maybe a sin, would reach the level of kufr. Very open and easy example I can give is how this, uh, mil, uh, this Miladul Nabi, you know, Eid Miladul Nabi or uh, the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ started. It started, you know, okay, slowly, slowly, let's be happy. The day of the Prophet ﷺ, he was born again. Na'uzubillah, we don't even know that was the day. We, we, it's 100% sure it was the day that he passed away, but it's not the day that he was born. There's a, there's a big, huge difference of opinions amongst the ulama on the day of birth. But anyways, nevertheless, we're not talking about, you know, we're not going into details of that. Um, you know, if sisters want to do that, inshallah, we can, you know, have a separate topic on understanding why that is considered as a bit there, as an innovation. But anyways, it started with, you know, a little minor in innovation in the deen, even though it's still an innovation, it's still sin. Okay, let's celebrate the, uh, the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ. Let's be happy about it. Slowly, 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 nowadays, today, this era... And this is not something that I've heard. I have seen it with my own eyes. We have reached the level of na'uzu billah, doing shirk with Allah, making the Prophet equal to Allah, na'uzu billah, with our own words. I don't know if you have, if you heard, you know, certain poems, certain recitations that they will start reciting. They will they are praising the Prophet as if na'uzu billah, he is 
the actual nur or, or, or just like Allah, na'uzubillah. And not only that, they even, even to the point that, you know, they started like bringing, you know, the Prophet ﷺ to the level where, you know, again, they will ask straight to the Prophet and not to Allah, the dua or any kind of supplication. So this, this bid'ah, which this innovation, which started as, you know, a sin, have become shirk now. This is the reality. And that is what? That we have rejected the tawheed of Allah. That is what? That we have rejected being submitted to Allah. The inqiyad, the condition, we rejected it. We did the opposite. We removed the tawheed. We removed it. Rather, na'uzu billah, we did something that is opposite of it. Allah SWT says in Surah Nisa, Ayah 65, But know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept with full submission. That is the condition. You have to accept with full submission. You cannot leave anything beyond that. You cannot be like, I'm not going to submit to this matter. If the Sharia of Allah says that, you know, a, a thief, of uh, the, a thief, his hand should be cut, I'm not going to submit to that. There is no way I'm going to submit to that. I do not agree with that. I do not accept that. Na'uzu billah. You have refused to accept the condition of Shahada because you have to have full submission. With La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they cannot be get ha- take half, leave half. No, subhanallah. It should be complete submission. All right, inshallah, I'll stop here, sisters. Um, next week, inshallah, we'll continue with uh, the sixth condition, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth. And then, inshallah, if we have time, we'll move forward to the second part of the shahada, which is the risala. Remember that all this time we, ha- we were studying only tawheed, la ilaha illallah. And imagine, subhanallah, yet, you know, I- I'm, I'm basically covering only very little of, you know, what little uh, has been basically taught. But other than that, subhanAllah, you know, if we go into details and studying it, it's huge. Allahu Akbar, our deen. And that's one of the reasons that we should at least know the basics. So we can leave no doubt. And bi ta'ala, when we die upon la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we die with conviction, we die with yaqeen, we die with submission. We die with every condition of tawheed of la ilaha illallah without any doubt. So that Allah, out of His utmost mercy, enter us in Jannah. Ameen. So inshallah, sisters, we'll continue next week. Uh, again, be very open. If you have any question, if you, uh, if you see that, you know, you don't understand anything, if I need to be more clearer, or if there's any mistake, you need to clarify or you need to correct, bi ta'ala, please openly do so. Jazakum Allah khair, barakallahu fiki, subhanak Allah wa bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha ilanta, subhanak, astaghfirullah wa tubu ilayk, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.